Sweden's FIFA World Cup history dates back to 1934, with the most memorable participation coming as hosts of the 1958 tournament. They reached the final, only to lose 5-2 to Brazil, as a 17-year-old Pelé helped the Selecao to their first world title. This week, we take a look at one of their more recent campaigns through the eyes of right-back Roland Nielsen, who played every minute of every game at USA 94. Sweden's first game in the States came against Cameroon, whose performances had enthralled the world four years earlier. Conversely, Sweden's Italian 90 had been a disaster, as they'd exited after three straight defeats. As always with the first game you play at the World Cup, you don't really know where you stand. Cameroon had done well for themselves in the past and we knew that they had a good team. And of course there are always a few more nerves before playing in your opening game of any tournament. Sweden took an early lead in the encounter through Roger Leung, but as predicted Cameroon proved to be tough opposition. After David Embe equalised in the 37th minute, Francois Oman Biek put the indomitable Lions ahead just after half time. It was a blow for the Swedes as memories of that 1990 campaign flooded back, but Martin Darlene restored their confidence with 15 minutes remaining, and Sweden had their first World Cup point in 16 years. Russia were up next, and Sweden were buoyed by some great support, not only from their travelling fans, but also some enthusiastic local backing. It wasn't a great game for us. We conceded a goal from a penalty and became the underdog. But we knew that we had a good team, and as long as we kept playing our game, we would be able to create opportunities to score. If we managed to do that, there would be a good chance for us to win or at least turn the game around and get a positive result. And that's what happened. We managed to make it 1-1, then 2-1, and finally the game finished 3-1 in our favour. With Martin Darlene rounding off the victory, Sweden had claimed their first World Cup win since 1974 and confidence was high. With four points from their two games, they were now in a good position in their group. But they knew a bigger test was yet to come. Sweden had the unenviable task of facing Brazil, a team boasting the likes of Romario, Bebeto, Aldair, Leonardo and Rai. Our confidence had been restored after victory in the game against Russia. But, of course, we knew that Brazil had some great players and a very good team, and so we knew that we would have to work very hard in defence. But we also knew that if we were able to perform well defensively, then we would be able to create some chances of our own on the counter-attack. And that's pretty much how the game turned out. Brazil controlled most of the possession, but we defended well and managed to create some opportunities to score ourselves and we actually ended up scoring the first goal. That goal came from Kenneth Anderson in the 23rd minute and rocked the Brazilian team. Unfortunately for Sweden, Romario denied them a historic win, equalising one minute into the second half. For Sweden, though, the point was enough to secure second place in the group and see them through to the round of 16. There, they'd face Saudi Arabia. On the face of it, not a bad draw. They were one of the easier teams that we could have played against if you look at all those who had gone through. But the heat in Dallas created some problems for us. It was over 40 degrees and we kicked off at midday. I think that was more worrying than facing Saudi Arabia. Though the temperature may have been far from ideal for the Scandinavians, they managed a comfortable 3-1 victory over their Saudi opponents. Up next, a quarter-final against Georgi Hadji's Romania. Goalless for much of the game, Thomas Brolin gave Sweden the lead with 12 minutes remaining. It felt like we had done enough and that we had good control over the game. 
and it looked to us like their heads had gone down and that they had started bickering with each other and arguing amongst themselves. But then, out of nowhere, they scored, and suddenly it was 1-1. With only two minutes left on the clock, and with Sweden's eyes on a semi-final, Florin Raduchoyu had sent the game to extra time. He added another in the 101st minute, but it was all square once again when Kenneth Anderson met Nilsson's cross and penalties beckoned. Nilsson and Sweden were ready for that eventuality. Any penalty shootout is always nerve-wracking. But we'd practised them a lot during the previous few days at training as we knew that there was a chance that one of our games would go all the way to penalties. Perhaps it gave us confidence because we knew that we were well prepared. I'd practised taking my penalty in exactly the same way that I was going to take one in a match. So when it was my turn to step up, I felt quite calm really. With the scores tied at 3-3, Nilsson's practice made perfect. Conversions from Illy Dumitrescu and Henrik Larsson followed, which left Sweden's fate in the hands of goalkeeper Thomas Ravelli. It was truly amazing. When you're standing there watching, you're nervous for your teammates and worried that the other team would score. If they had, that would have put the pressure back on us. But Thomas Ravelli made an excellent save and we qualified for the semi-finals. And another meeting with Brazil. I don't really know what was different. I guess that it was a bit harder second time around because they knew how we would play and we still knew that they were a very good team. The biggest worry for us before the semi-final was that they had had 24 hours more rest than us. And of course, we'd had to work really hard for 120 minutes against Romania in the quarter-final. It proved to be a bridge too far for Nielsen and co. Once again, it was Romario who dealt the killer blow. His goal, with only 10 minutes remaining, gave a 10-man Sweden scant time to recover. It was certainly frustrating for us. Mostly because we got shown a red card that should only have been a yellow. If we had still had 11 men, it would have helped us to be a bit more positive and get a good result. Instead, we had to focus on defending and hope for extra time or even a penalty shootout. But of course, it didn't work out that way and we couldn't keep their strikers at bay. Sweden were out at the hands of the eventual winners, but their tournament wasn't over. A third-place playoff was to follow against the other surprise semi-finalist, Bulgaria. But the Swedes had no problem ending their American adventure in style, scoring four without reply in the first half. They left the US as the tournament's top scorers. Yes, it was a good feeling. After the game against Brazil, we had talked about how we wanted to win the third place playoff match to avoid feeling disappointed about the whole tournament. And when we did just that, we left the USA feeling great. And with the current side struggling to qualify for South Africa, third place in 1994 offers something more enjoyable to look back on.